explain for you the assessment 31849-03 ensure a safe workplace okay for assessment task 3 you need to complete a case study and there will be a written task and also a video that you need to produce so in summarizing this particular assessment the main process is conducting a review of existing workplace documentation for the Australian hardware and again this is the Wollongong store that you're concentrating on so you need to review their current documentation look at updates and development of new policies and procedures so you're providing recommendations based on the research you've conducted previously you need to record a video for this particular um, assessment as well and remember just a simple video recorded on a smartphone is quite fine it doesn't have to be edited but just remember with every video provide a simple introduction explain what the video is before you get started on the video um, you could do something simple like even write up the assessment number on a sheet of paper and hold it up in front of the screen a very simple process so let's get started on what's required so number one you need to develop the short induction training session and this only needs to go for two to three minutes and it needs to be either an audio or video recording the main points you need to get across here is how staff will locate WHS policies for Australian hardware you need to explain how they identify hazards you need to explain how they will record and report um, any issues that they have and any tools that they would using or resources like checklists etc and then make sure that you ask questions of the trainees that are participating in the induction session so it's a really short training video two to three minutes do this with friends family colleagues it's not in a real work environment it's simulated it's mock and it doesn't have to be the best video production you're not going for a golden globe prize remember it's just simply checking that you've covered those points we need to get across to the staff and that you communicate effectively and clearly and clarify with the staff that they understand what's required you could set up some mock questions in advance and have your friends or colleagues whoever's doing that with you you can have them ask you those questions and you can answer the questions for them the next part of the assessment is the proposed work health and safety management system and there's a template that's available so you've got an example template when we talk about the timing this simply is how long will you take to do this particular topic the topic is whatever you're doing so you would obviously start with an introduction and then work through in a logical sequence going through all of the training topics that you need to discuss um, throughout this training session okay so you try and follow a logical sequence that so you start with the base information working through to more specific information so it's a rounded um, training session trainer notes are what exactly are you going to discuss um, the activities is how are you going to make sure that the learners can participate because if it's something like a skills training session they need a chance to actually perform the skill in front of you so they can demonstrate their understanding resources this means anything you're going to use um, during that particular training activity so the staff are aware and um, trained properly and correctly so think of any training session you've ever been to think about going to school you know think about the learning resources you were given books and photos and instructions etc etc this is what you need to provide for your staff could be a PowerPoint presentation that you refer to a slideshow or something like that or even YouTube videos I use YouTube videos very effectively for all kinds of training sessions just for awareness if it relates to a subject that you don't have a specialist video going on YouTube you might have something that you say look it's not exactly our company but this is a, a risk 
a good one would be like forklift safety or something like that. There's a, tons and tons of videos on forklift safety. So the resources are anything you're going to use to help get your point across and help train the staff and create awareness for safety. In some sections you might not, it might just be a discussion, you might not have resources. So fill that out in as much detail as you possibly can. So for step two we need to develop a procedure for record keeping and this is really important with any training we do on the job but in particular work health and safety or when we're doing um, high risk jobs because it's very important that as a duty of care the employer must be able to prove that they've trained their staff if there was an accident. If there's ever an accident on the, in the workplace the state um, work health and safety authority will come and do an investigation if, it, if it's a major incident. So if it's a serious uh, injury where staff are actually need to get medical treatment, it will be investigated. You can do that internally, but quite often someone from the state authority will come and do an investigation as well. And that could also include police. If it's an issue where there's been a death on the work site, there's very, very stringent protocols for safeguarding the work site and, and shutting down that section wherever the um, accident took place so there can be a full investigation undertaken. If you tamper with, the, with that particular site or move equipment, you can get into very, very big trouble. So the record keeping is critical. We need to have a record of all the training staff have done. This is Think of registrations and licensing, it's particularly important. Think about someone like an electrician. They need to be updating their licensing and registrations all the time. So we need a record of when it's due so it doesn't expire. Because if someone's working, it's like having a driver's license. If you drive and your license is expired, well, you know, you're breaking the law. And same in the workplace. If your license and registrations expire or training expires, and by law you have to have that training, you're breaking the law. So PCBUs or persons controlling a business unit, they need to make sure their staff are trained and there's a record of that training if it ever needs to be reviewed by the work health and safety authorities. So with the record keeping procedure, it's like the other procedures we've created, pretty simple. What is the title? It's a, well, this is a record keeping um, procedure. We know the purpose. It's a very simple explanation. Scope, who, where, when, why. Responsibilities, it's the person authorizing the document to be put into place. And then relevant legislation, we're referring to the acts, the laws, the codes of practice, um, reviewing the procedure, so time frames, why we're doing the review, how will it be reviewed, who's responsible for the review, what happens if we find information that needs amendment. And then we go into the procedures. So depending on what state you're from, there'll be, del uh, there'll be different record keeping requirements and a different act. So you need to think at the national level of the, of the acts you need to refer to and also the state level of the acts you need to refer to as well and list these off and what particular requirements do they have? What do they state are your requirements for record keeping? Um, so how often would you review the policy and how is it going to be enacted? How will you share the information? What staff are responsible? Think of all these sorts of things and then data and statistics that might need to be provided as well to government bodies. Step three is about developing a feedback questionnaire and this is to enable the Australian hardware staff to provide feedback on the WHS management system. We need to know if it's meeting the current staff needs and you have um, templates available in Appendix 2 for this one. So with the feedback questionnaire, it's, it's, we need to know who we'd be providing this document to, um, why we'd be providing it, the various sections or departments they work for, and very importantly, recording the date that the feedback is being provided. And we use this as a reference guide for making improvements or amendments later on down the track. So with the management system, think about what would you need to know about the management system. Think of all the documents and the policies and the procedures that the staff need to use. And how are you going to find out what questions would you ask relating to these procedures. So think about the issues 
of staff access or training and finding information. Think about whether the information is detailed enough and whether or not the staff can have an understanding of what's required without referring to another staff member. Maybe there is training or mentoring or even supervision that could be required for staff to understand the processes. Has that been undertaken? So think about what you're developing previously. Think about these policies and procedures you've been developing for the other assessments and I'd be giving reference to those as well. So simple questions, simple to understand and the idea is, is it effective or is it not effective? That's what we need to know. If it's effective, it's going to be great, we're doing the right thing. If we get feedback that shows it's ineffective, well that tells us we need to make changes. Number four in this assessment is evaluating the national work health and safety data and it's preparing an email to management. So you need to have a look at the data that's in appendix three for this one. So what you're trying to identify is trends in the system. So you need to go through all the data for the Australian hardware and look at all the injuries that have taken place or all the accidents or near misses that they've had. So you need to get a table together to record all of these separate incidents and identify some trends. You've, it's in a, a date scale as well, so have a look from the earliest dates to the most recent dates and are numbers going down, are numbers increasing, are numbers remaining the same. If it's like incidents like near misses, you need to think about, well, how can we make changes if, if it's a near miss, someone hasn't been hurt and this needs to be recorded as much as anything in a business. It's one of the hardest things you can do is get staff to record near misses. But it's critical because if we know they're almost having an injury, well, it's an accident waiting to happen and we can make changes. If there are regular injuries that are taking place, we need to know what type of injuries and then we can make either changes to the systems or the processes and keep staff aware of particular dangers within the workplace. Think of your hierarchy of control and how you would um, maintain controls of this. So we're looking at trends in the risks and hazards within the workplace. You don't have to make recommendations, but it, this is about analysing data because it's a really important part of, you might be a PCBU or working with a work health and safety committee. So going back through a work health and safety records is something we review on a regular basis. So then we can try to eliminate any chance that there's going to be accident and injury um, or illness in the workplace. Okay, so that's the end of this discussion regarding the assessment. As with um, all assessments, you can contact me via a direct message. And also, if these are complex assessments of work health and safety, I understand that, so I'm happy to chat. Call up Open Colleges and I'll talk you through it, okay? All the best. Good luck. Thank you.